powerful storms unleashed flash floods across much of Tri-State Sunday night, shutting down vital roads, stranding drivers, and snarling train service in parts of the region. In Connecticut, two people were reported missing after being swept away by floodwaters in Oxford, according to WTNH. Officials say one person was holding on to a sign and another was inside a car when they were swept away. On Long Island, a number of motorists were left stranded near El Dorado Drive and Jericho Turnpike in Suffolk County. Crews were out early Monday morning working to pump water from the intersection ahead of the morning rush hour. The rain in New Jersey was powerful enough to bring traffic to a grinding halt. Hundreds of vehicles had nowhere to go on the Garden State Parkway in East Orange. The New Jersey Turnpike Authority issued a travel alert for weather-related closures on the Garden State Parkway in New Jersey Turnpike. The water there practically swallowed half a dozen cars, including a state trooper's cruiser. Without anywhere to go, some drivers got out of their cars. Tim Clancy had been on a date at the Woodland Park Barnes and Noble when a flash flood enveloped the shopping center's parking lot. Clancy and his date tried to plow through the water, got stuck, and wound up at a Popeye's, soaked and waiting for a ride. You point and laugh, you know. It's like, that poor sucker. Now we're the sucker tonight for sure, Clancy said. Clancy said he didn't expect his date to end at Popeye's. We're vegan. We don't even eat chicken, he added. According to meteorologist Lee Goldberg, the flooding was caused by a slow-moving upper trough and associated surface front. Low pressure developed nearby and slowly drifted across the area, enhancing the rainfall. With abundant moisture in place, rainfall rates up to 3-4 inches per hour led to extreme flash flooding. While this wasn't moisture from Ernesto, Lee explained, the hurricane certainly jammed up the playing field, slowing down the east coast trough and associated surface front. Into Monday evening, drenching rain and thunderstorms crawling across the east will continue to interfere with commutes and outdoor plans before the much-needed arrival of cooler, less humid, and drier weather. A slow-moving storm and trailing front are currently tapping into a growing zone of warm and moist air from the Appalachians to the Atlantic coast, leading to drenching showers and thunderstorms across the region. As evidenced over the weekend, some of the storms in this atmospheric setup can turn feisty with damaging wind gusts, as well as heavy rain and flash flooding concerns. Slow-moving thunderstorms recently unloaded six to 10 inches of rain on portions of Connecticut and southeastern New York in 24 hours. The rounds of repeating downpours unleashed flash flooding of small streams and sent water flowing across low-lying roads. On Monday, the likelihood of flash flooding and the risk of severe weather will be largely confined to the mid-Atlantic region. Motorists and airline passengers should anticipate major travel delays as downpours linger and severe storms approach. Metro areas like New York City, Hartford, Connecticut, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., Richmond, Virginia, and Raleigh, North Carolina will be within the corridor where potent storms can fire into Monday evening. There will also be some pockets of severe thunderstorms and flooding downpours in central and eastern New England, including Boston, Providence, Rhode Island, and Portland, Maine. There can still be flash flooding of small streams and urban areas where it manages to pour for a couple of hours, AccuWeather senior meteorologist Dan Pitanowski said. Areas that sustained infrastructure damage to drainage systems and roadways during Debbie's deluge and downpours this past weekend may be most vulnerable to the quick runoff from downpours into Monday evening. The main reason that the Northeast did not experience widespread major river flooding from Debbie was that intense rain fell in a narrow zone that affected mainly rural communities in the Appalachians rather than widespread heavy rainfall over the entire watershed of the large rivers. AccuWeather Senior Director of Forecasting Operations, Dan DePodwin explained. Farther south, Debbie was not so kind to the Carolinas and part of Georgia. This zone was swamped by torrential rainfall over a broad area encompassing many major river systems. Rivers in the lowlands continued to run at moderate to high flood levels, with some not forecast to crest until late in the weekend or later this week. Even though the bulk of the rain will focus on the northeast into Monday, enough downpours may occur along the southeast coast to trigger flash urban and small stream flooding in some areas. As the rain runs off into the larger rivers, 
Water levels may rise again in some locations, but not to the extent that Debbie triggered. Meanwhile, those at the beaches may face another dangerous problem. AccuWeather meteorologists continue to warn of the risk of frequent and strong rip currents due to Hurricane Ernesto, which was spinning over the North Atlantic and will pass near Newfoundland early this week. By Tuesday, much of the Northeast will trend drier than what has been the theme the last few days. Forecasters say that there may be a few stubborn showers across portions of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine on Tuesday, but a building zone of high pressure tracking eastward from the Great Lakes will promote dry conditions across the rest of the Northeast.